Life depends on life. Plants, animals, and microbes provide us with food, clothes, even the air we breathe. Without the Earth's varied life forms, its biodiversity, life as we know it wouldn't exist. Biodiversity fuels life in another way too. It supplies raw materials for development of new scientific tools that ultimately help improve our health, our safety, our quality of life. Example, two single-celled microbes recently helped spawn a new field that's revolutionizing brain science and helping answer one of humanity's most vexing and important questions. How do billions of brain neurons interact to produce thoughts, memories, behaviors? This new revolutionary field is called optogenetics. It enables scientists to selectively turn target neurons in animal brains on and off just by shining certain types of light on them. Blue light turns on target neurons without affecting surrounding cells. Orange light turns them off. Think of the brain like the electrical circuits in your home. To identify the function of each circuit or type of neuron, you could individually turn each circuit on and off to see which electrical outlets or behaviors they each control. Developed with funding from the National Science Foundation, optogenetics is being used around the world to study neurons possibly involved in epilepsy, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, visual impairment, anxiety, and many other diseases and disorders. Hopes are high such studies will ultimately lead to new treatments. Treatments that probably wouldn't be found without biodiversity. Here's why. Brain neurons are not naturally light sensitive. So to find a way to control neurons with light, scientists had to draw on research about two light sensitive organisms. The Chlamydomonas algae, found in ponds and lakes the world over, and Natronomonas feronis, a microbe found in remote, super salty Saharan lakes. The algae have a light sensitive protein that when exposed to light, steers the algae towards the light so it can feed through photosynthesis. Brain researchers discovered they could use the algae's light sensitive protein to make the brains of various species responsive to blue light. Once they insert the algae's light sensitive protein into target neurons, they can selectively turn on those neurons merely by shining blue light on them and then observe resulting behaviors. The Saharan microbe contributed a different type of light sensitive protein, one that helps the microbe use the sun's energy to maintain the correct internal chemistry to survive salty lakes. Once researchers insert this microbe's light sensitive protein into target neurons, they can turn those neurons off by shining orange light on them and thereby stop activated behaviors. The foundation for optogenetics was largely laid by many studies funded by the National Science Foundation on how the light sensitive proteins of microbes function. Studies not led by brain scientists, but by scientists who were driven by sheer curiosity about how simple organisms survive. Scientists who had no idea their work would ever help revolutionize the study of the brain. Considering the importance to brain science of an algae easily confused for pond scum and a microbe from desiccated abandoned ecosystems, both creatures could serve as poster children for the conservation and study of even seemingly useless organisms. After all, who knows what pivotal technology might have been derived from any of the dozens of species, some perhaps still undiscovered, that will go extinct by tomorrow morning.